Section One of Emily Dickinson on Death. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Libby Gone. Emily Dickinson on Death by Emily Dickinson. Amherst, January second, eighteen fifty one, to Mrs. Strong. Tuesday evening. I write A tonight because it is too cool and quiet, and I can forget the toil and care of the feverish day, and then I am selfish too because I am feeling lonely. Some of my friends are gone, and some of my friends are sleeping, sleeping the churchyard sleep. The hour of evening is sad. It was once my study hour. My master has gone to rest and the open leaf of the book and the scholar at school alone make the tears come and i cannot brush them away i would not if i could for they are the only tribute i can pay the departed humphrey you have stood by the grave before i have walked there sweet summer evenings and read the names on the stones and wondered who would come and give me the same memorial but i have never laid my friends there and forgot that they too must die. This is my first affliction, and is too hard to bear it. To those bereaved so often that home is no more here, and whose communion with friends is had only in prayers, there must be much to hope for. But when the unreconciled spirit has nothing left but God, the spirit is lone indeed. I don't think there will be any sunshine, or any singing birds in the spring that's coming. I will try not to say any more. My rebellious thoughts are many, and the friend I love and trust in has much now to forgive. I wish I were somebody else. I would pray the prayer of the Pharisee, but I am a poor little publican. Son of David, look down on me. T'was a great while ago when you wrote me. I remember the leaves were falling and now there are falling snows. Who maketh the two to differ? Are not leaves the brethren of snows? Then it can't be a great while since then, though I verily thought it was. We are not so young as we once were, and time seems to be growing long. I dream of being a grand dame, and banding my silver hairs, and I seem to be quite submissive to the thought of growing old, no doubt you ride rocking horses in your present as in your young sleeps quite a pretty contrast indeed for me braiding my own grey hairs and my friend at play with her childhood a pair of decayed old ladies where are you my antique friend or my very dear and young one just as you please to please it may seem quite a presumption that i address you at all knowing not if you have it here or if my bird has flown in which world her wing is folded. When I think of the friends I love, and the little while we may dwell here, and then we go away, I have a yearning feeling, a desire eager and anxious, lest any be stolen away so that I cannot behold them. I would have you here, all here, where I can see you and hear you, and where I can say, Oh, no, if the Son of Man ever cometh. It is not enough now and then, at long and uncertain intervals, to hear you're alive and well. I do not care for the body. I love the timid soul, the blushing, shrinking soul. It hides, for it is afraid, and the bold, obtrusive body. Pray, Marm, did you call me? We are very small, eh? I think we grow still smaller. This tiny insect life, the portal to another— it seems strange, strange indeed. I'm afraid we are all unworthy, yet we shall enter in. I can think of no other way than for you, my dear girl, to come here. We are growing away from each other, and talk even now like strangers. To forget the meum and teum, dearest friends must meet sometimes, and then comes the bond of spirit, which, if I am correct, is unity. You are growing wiser than I am, and nipping in the bud fancies which I let blossom, 
perchance to bear no fruit, or if plucked I may find it bitter. The shore is safer, eh, but I love to buffet the sea. I can count the bitter wrecks here in these pleasant waters, and hear the murmuring winds, but oh, I love the danger. You are learning control and firmness. Christ Jesus will love you more. I'm afraid he don't love me any. Write when you will, my friends, and forget all amiss herein, for as these few imperfect words to the full communion of spirits, so this small giddy life to the better, the eternal life, and that we may live this life, and be filled with this true communion, I shall not cease to pray. E. End of section one.